All right. So that was the vocal stylings of <laughs> Madeline Pryor, Mad P, and um, from way dope. back in the day. So, well, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I think we're all sorted. I see us up everywhere. I see a couple of folks coming in. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so we're just going to jump right into these reasons because uh, I do only have Mish for a, a set amount of time and I want to be respectful of everyone and her. So um, let's let's jump right into it. Um, again, I have way more than 30, but we're going to talk about my top 30 reasons for wanting to uh, have uh, adult X education out there that's wholesome, inclusive, and of course, data science based. So, reason number 30, my friends. Um, I was introduced to sex in the stupidest way, and probably the way that most people were um, through my dad's like prawn collection, basically, or his corn collection, we'll say. Um, and, and I mean, and it was, it was not good. <laughs> It was not good stuff. It was like the 1970s, you know, sepia tone, Debbie does Dallas, Harry hustler, you know, it, no child should be, you know, forced to uh, uh, be introduced to, to X in that way. And so I, um, I'm going to go ahead and actually just kind of shout out why that you know, speaks to me. So one of the courses that I want to do is all about, um, you know, intercourse. So the sixth course I want to build is called Intercourse Discourse. And we're going to, you know, teach adults about sex, X in a really, really uh, positive way uh, so that, you know, hopefully they don't have a lot of materials around that their kids uh, happen upon. But uh, yeah, so that was kind of the silliest way to, I think, to be introduced to X. <laughs> I don't know. The, when was your first time seeing like a porno? <laughs> Me? Um, so my parents actually, uh, I would see crazy movies in my youth, but it wasn't porn, but it was from the 70s. And, you know, sex was prevalent in these films. So like Caligula, uh, um, like <laughs> What was that? <laughs> wow. I've seen, I've seen some things. Um, <laughs> oh, I remember um, I actually saw a Karma Sutra book in the basement of my oh house. My God. And I was like, what is this? I was, I was pretty young. I don't know how young, but it was from when my mom was in college. So, I mean, that was what I saw. Wow. Yeah, no, that's... Uh... That reminds me of uh, a conversation we had with in our Black Lesbians podcast, um, mm -hmm. where uh, we were just talking about how when we were all little, like it was three of us on that chat, and each one of us had a moment when we were little kids that we, you know, played house <laughs> with another little girl. Um, mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that that I happened upon when I was a kid. I had a, a, a little girlfriend and her mom had the art of sex. And uh, that book. <laughs> yeah. My mom gifted me that book when I was in college. But no! like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, that's some raunch right there. So I don't know. I feel like if we, again, had better materials as adults than our kids, <laughs> we're probably coming to it a little better, even if they happened to pun those things. But yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. What it's like? What what? When is an okay time to present these materials to your child? When is it okay? <laughs> well, well, now people are seeing sex everywhere. It's all over the internet. All over the internet. True. 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 So, so it's kind of like, know. yeah, it's a bit different than you know when we grew up. That's true. That's true. So I guess like, you know. That's a that's a whole topic into itself. We're gonna keep moving because I that's opening a, a huge can of worms of how in the internet age do children you know get in you know into this knowledge on on their own. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll keep it going because this is gonna open up some some stuff. Because I have kids now too. I'm like, oh wait a minute, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm gonna think about that. But no, let's move on to uh, reason number twenty nine. 
So uh, I very recently learned about asexuality and I wasn't really uh, familiar with it until a friend of mine, uh, Pamela, who I uh, was a, a, who I worked with, it was just a former colleague. Um, she was like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm asexual. I don't, and I was like, well, what is that? You know, so, so I, she opened me up to this whole ace arrow spectrum uh, of, where people can be asexual or aromantic. Um, and I even learned that there's so much to it. Like you can be a uh, lie, sexual, platonic, romantic, coy, sexual, rose, sexual, dual, sexual, Bella, romantic, pan, romantic. Uh, let's see, agaromantic, uh, cupiosexual. Like there's so many nuances uh, to this this whole world that I had no idea about. And so I was really just kind of, you know, like, well, dang, if we had something, you know, as part of our just curricula and learning about orientations, for instance, uh, such as my course, The Sexual Mind, where we <laughs> want to talk about uh, different orientations, I would have learned a long time ago that there's this whole range of emotions and um, feelings that people have. Uh, and so, you know, and they're, and they're all very valid. I mean, so if you're feeling like, I really enjoy sex, but I don't really feel the romantic attraction piece. And you just never knew that you were a romantic. You might feel like, ah, oh, you know, I've, there's something wrong with me or something like that. When in reality, it's a very, it's a very real orientation to have. And so I really, really want to get that information out there as part of, again, my lesson on uh, orientations in the sexual mind course. So that's why I really want you to pledge some money to this Kickstarter so we can get these courses off the ground. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever heard of asexuality or when did you learn about asexuality, Mish? Um, so I probably learned more about asexuality in my adult years, um, mm -hmm. because people realizing that people in their attractions were a bit different and how their energy like would <laughs> be different within relationships and connecting to others. And even in some of my um, prior partnerships, realizing that, um, their relationship to themselves was a bit different and their mm -hmm. relationship to others was a bit different. So it probably happened more so in the past five years or so. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, Let's actually experience it. It's a bit mm -hmm. different. But, you know, I, uh, I meet people who have like high libido or low libido. And I wonder where the ace arrow spectrum kind of interacts with that. Like if you're, low libido, maybe you're actually uh, on the A spectrum and don't really even know it. So, I mean, I don't know. Again, I really want to explore these things. I really want that to be uh, something we talk about. And I actually uh, sat down with Pamela uh, and uh, she's one of my podcast guests. So hers is actually the next one to come out. So if you go to uh, withsophie.co slash podcast, you can uh, sign up to get a notification if you want to hear that asexuality episode. It's really going to be fascinating. Um, but let's go ahead and move on. Uh, reason number 28 that I want to bring wholesome adult sex ahead into the world is because um, the way my mom found out that I was having sex uh, was that I went to the gynecologist and um, it came back that I had uh, abnormal cells on my cervix. And so I had to go get like a cone biopsy and all this stuff. And so my mom was researching it because she's awesome. You know, she, my mom, we'll talk about her a lot throughout this and she's an interesting lady. But um, so she she read that those abnormal cells tend to come from HPV, which is a sexually transmitted disease. So she was like, oh, are you having sex? And I was like, because I was like maybe 18 at the time. I was, you know, I was at the house. I was in college. Um, but it was still like this whole weird you know, thing. And um, I was like, yeah, I was like, how did you know? And she was like, because you have HPV. What's so crazy, right, is I got tested immediately because I really wanted to see like, oh, snap, do I have something? Like, what's going on? I don't have HPV. I didn't have HPV. So I just randomly had, <laughs> you know, 
uh, abnormal cells and it outed me to my mom. So that was kind of, kind of messed up. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Does that ring anything for you or have, have you ever? Um, so I've had, uh, I had been tested for that as well and had to have um, that same procedure. Um, but mm. I don't have HPV either. So mm. like even yeah. um, information that we gain about, well, that we learn about HPV, you know, like we don't learn about uh, like what causes the different things. So like mm. that would be a useful thing for us to learn even you know for younger people to learn about HPV I think so and honestly too like I really want to bring the female matters course into the world because I think it that's a huge part of it talking about some of the STDs that we could get that there are uh, vaccines for these things now that we could get so again let's pledge some money to bring these courses into the world go to bit.ly slash SWSKS. I just put that into the comments so you can go right there. You can actually watch this live from the Kickstarter. So uh, let's keep it going. I'm going to talk about reason number 27. And that is that I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, and this is following along with the need for course two uh, on female matters because. Um, Essentially, it's something that almost 20% of women have. And, uh, you know, it's just not known about. I didn't know about it until I was in college. Uh, my, I was a junior in college. And I went to the doctor on campus and she was like, you know, you're exhibiting a lot of symptoms for this. So that includes like facial hair growth, uh, gaining a lot of weight very quickly, being unable to lose it um, just, uh, lethargy, you know, I was basically a, a classic case, but she took all my hormones and, and they were all fine. So it actually took me getting, um, uh, an ultrasound of my ovaries to see this chicken skin like texture where all the cysts basically are, uh, to get a diagnosis of PCOS. Um, but it's something that affects so many women. And I, again, I didn't even know about it. I didn't even know it was a thing almost, uh, over 18, somewhere between 18 and 20% of women have it. Uh, yeah. So it's just one of those things. I don't know, Misha, is it something you've even heard of or, or if so, when did you hear about it? So I know a few people who have it and within the past 10 years, I've met several women who have been battling with that. Um, and many of my, my spiritual teachers, um, have had it. And, um, I found out my mother had had it as well. Um, mm. but I never knew. Um, oh. So it is something that's uh, rather prevalent. And um, I was tested for it as well because once I took myself off of birth control, um, I started to uh, deal with a lot of um, adverse had hormonal issues. Mm. And that was one of the things that I was tested for. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a lot of people have it actually. Wow, I'm sorry you had to uh, even go through it though, because like I don't know. Again, if it's one of those things where we known about it earlier, we kind of probably could mitigate those feelings. So even if you were having symptoms of it, uh, some of the hormone therapies that are helpful for PCOS help symptoms of it. If you're experiencing uh, again, like lethargy. Uh, excessive weight gain, stuff like that. That's why I like the whole Ozempic thing. I'm really excited about that because uh, I don't know. That's one of the things that a lot of people in the PCOS community have found to be helpful because it's really an imbalance of hormones. Um, mm -hmm. The really like sad thing about PCOS is that it really causes uh, infertility. And so it took me 10 years and over 10 years and two rounds of IVF to actually conceive a biological baby. So it was, you know, it's one of those things, again, you wish you knew about because it would be so helpful. Um, but anyway, let's uh, move on to reason number 26. Just keep it going. Um, let's see. So reason number 26 that I want to bring inclusive, wholesome, data science driven adult sex ed into the world is because um, 
I am pansexual, which means I uh, don't care what genitals you have. If I like you, I like you. Um, and so, of course, when I went to college, I spread my wings, if you will. <laughs> and I remember my first time um, being with a woman and just not, you know, thinking I knew what to do because I'm a woman. I know what I like, you know, and just being woefully unprepared <laughs> for, for actually being useful in, in this, you know, woman's bed. So it it was um, just an eye opening experience that you 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 would think it's something that comes naturally, if you will. But it, it really didn't. Um, and then I actually had my uh, black lesbians podcast. Uh, that was the first one we released uh, with the Sex with Sophie podcast. And um, I interviewed Fadanya and Angels, just the sweetest, sweetest people. And uh, they <laughs> were talking about how they kind of came into their sexuality. And an angel said, yeah, I, I wasn't gay. I didn't, you know, so when I finally started to accept that, yeah, I actually do like women more than men. Um, she's, she said she had to go Google in things because she didn't know either, like what it was to, to uh, have sex with a woman. And so I definitely feel like my course on intercourse discourse, uh, which again, if you can contribute something to this Kickstarter will help us to bring this to, into the world. We can you know, educate people on what exactly lesbian sex is, what exactly uh, various kinds of intercourse are. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, Mish. <laughs> I too am a, am a pansexual and um, I learned about my own sexuality through trial and error. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got to say today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no worries. All right. So the last one I want to talk about in this section uh, is uh, reason number 25. And um, I am kind of embarrassed to say <laughs> that I thought I was such an ally, right? I thought I was like so progressive. Um, and so I was, you know, on Reddit one day and uh, I was in like a trans subreddit for some reason. Just I'm interested. I want to know what's going on. And I saw this this. Uh, female to male transsexuals, transgender persons post. And they were like, yeah, I just, I don't understand why every man that I'm with insists that I be the bottom just because I still have a vagina. And I was like, oh, well, you know, why wouldn't you want to just use your vagina if that's what you have, you know, to make you feel good right now? Like, why don't you just use it for pleasure? <laughs> like an idiot and he was like he was like bitch i have dysphoria like i don't i don't give a shit about this i don't want a vagina i don't you know what are you not understanding about so i was like oh no oh my god like so just the fact that like even somebody who really wants to understand and 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 i do consider myself an ally i consider myself very knowledgeable on these things and what a big faux pas to make and what a you know i feel like that could be so hurtful to someone so I had to apologize so profusely. Uh, but yeah, I just think that's something that would be really helpful to learn about in, in male anatomy, that trans men are men. And if they still are walking around with a vagina, that that might cause them a little dysphoria. So um, yeah, I definitely feel like uh, I had to learn some things and educate myself. Um, and I actually learned about a really cool tool and Mish, you got to tell me if you've ever heard of Packers. In fact, if you're watching, leave, uh, leave a, a note in the comments if you have heard of Packers. If not, let me tell you what they are. Let me see. Let me, Mish, you heard of Packers? No, I haven't. Mm -mm. Packers are basically prosthetic penises. And so like a lot of women who don't want to be women and are men want to, you know, have the feeling of having a penis and not everybody can get bottom surgery, you know? So they actually have male penis prosthetics called Packers. 
and they do all kind of things. Like some have like rods in them for actually having sex. Some have like funnels in them so you can stand up to pee. And it's just fascinating. Uh, so I, you know, I feel, yeah, I think it's great, but I feel horrible like that. It took me being 41 years old, you know, before I could learn about a whole group of subset of the human population and the things that make them feel better about being a human, you know, I just, uh, I don't know. So I felt woefully ignorant. And so if you too learn something new, um, that's just one of the things I would love to share. And uh, again, my my about a boy uh, course where we talk about male anatomy, including trans men and anat men's anatomy. Um, and uh, we'll talk about what bottom surgery looks like and what that entails. Um, I just learned about that recently, how they basically take uh, the a vein and a, a thick section from your arm to create the penis. Uh, and then to cover this section, they take a section from your thigh to cover that. So it's a very complicated process um, that just amazes me, quite frankly. So I uh, would love to, to let the world know what people have to go through to feel more themselves. Um, and if you didn't know that and you are like a FTM trans person, then wouldn't it be great to have that information at hand for you in our About a Boy set of courses? So. Um, this wraps up our first set of reasons as to why I think uh, adult sex ed is absolutely critical. Um, so what I'd like to do now is just run a little promo video <laughs> for Sex with Sophie so you can get a better understanding of what I'm doing here and why I'm doing it. So uh, take a few minutes and enjoy. Hi, I'm Sophie, an author, wife, and mom on the hunt for real information about sex. If you're anything like me, then all you had to go on was your mom's mortifying birds and bees speech, your abstinence-laden middle school sex education curriculum, whatever it is they're showing on TV these days, and porn. Well, I'm anti-porn. Oh, no, not that I don't like porn, I love porn. What I'm saying is that I'm visually and aesthetically the polar opposite of what most people find desirable. Unfortunately, studies show that black women are consistently the least desired race and gender combination. Plus, I'm fat? Oh, don't feel sorry for me. I mean, who better to join on a journey of sexual learning and discovery than somebody that you can walk beside without distraction? But how are you qualified to take us on this journey of sex education, you ask? Oh, I'm not. I'm just a regular person with the same curiosities and questions that you have. And besides, I'm not leading anything. You are. The one through line across my incredibly varied working life in real estate, marketing, and science fiction writing is data science. My superpower is asking the right questions, deciphering analytics, and performing stellar research. That's why I'm building Sex with Sophie, to be a living set of courses that teach the primary acts and facets of sex based on the statistical analysis that I gather from my members' anonymized profiles and their answers to fun and interactive questionnaires. Plus, only members will be able to watch the Sex with Sophie show, which also premieres at launch. This is my supplementary documentary series, which covers everything from toes to toys, virginity to pregnancy, and kissing to kinks. Pre-enrollment for Sex with Sophie is open now. Sign up today and create your profile to become a Kickstarter for this endeavor with your funding, but also by helping us accrue data. Upon launch, you will get first look access to the courses and unlimited streaming to the Sex with Sophie show. But you don't have to wait until launch for the fun to begin. Pre-enroll today and you'll be regularly notified about fun questionnaires, new site features, and launch updates. You'll also get full access to exclusive content and extras from the Sex with Sophie podcast. This is where we interview people from different walks of sexual life, like seniors, sex workers, BDSM, and lesbianism. Thank you for your interest in Sex with Sophie. Support us today by pre-enrolling at sexwithsophie.com on a plan that's comfortable for you. And remember, love one another with permission.
that is my little promo for uh, sexwithsophie.com, which is a wonderful, beautiful little place that you can go right now and um, become a member for free. Uh, we do have paid plans that get you access to some additional podcast features and also our uh, guided medit meditations that you're not even ready for. They're just so amazing. Um, we, uh, for free, you just already get access to our community features, which include like a forum. We have some focus groups. Uh, we have amazing quizzes that we've already started to build that this Kickstarter will help us to fund even more of. Um, and we have a Ask Sophie segment, which is really, really nice for you to be able to, to leave a video message or a text message or audio message with a question that you have that I will personally go and research and find the right people to uh, respond to you about. So <laughs> it's really great. Um, I do have a Kickstarter update for you. So we went from 3,000, uh, let's see. 3,171. And now we're at 3,303. So thank you so much for pledging. Um, it really means the world to me. I feel like this is, again, something that will absolutely change the world. Um, very many people need to know like that there's, there's information out there that's not based on pornography. It's not based on textbooks. It's based on women telling you about what it's like to be a woman or what a woman's needs are about trans people telling you about what it's like to be trans and what trans people's needs are, um, all based on data science um, and, and aggregated crowdsourced information. So it's, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. We have to make this work. So I would really appreciate it if you continue to pledge. Um, we're going to go through some more reasons and then, you know, definitely check back and uh, go to bit.ly slash SWSKS, all caps, and make a pledge. You can also check the comment section. I will leave another one. Oh, and we have a comment from Miss Starberry Shortcake. <laughs> she just said, hey, Sophie, is there anything you can't do? That's the sweetest thing. There's so many things I can't do. Um, like, I can't do this alone. So I definitely want to you to go to the Kickstarter, make a pledge, and let's see if we can get a few more bucks towards this goal for uh, making these courses live. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to keep it moving just so we can stick to schedule here. So I want to say that the promo music that you heard uh, came from my dear friend, Sid Mercutio in London. And um, he also made the track that goes uh, on our podcast. So uh, definitely check out the podcast because you will get to hear his stuff and he's awesome. So let's keep it going and we're going to pick up at reason number 24. So one of the things that I uh, had to do on my own is learn about gender affirming care. So uh my mom was not very <laughs> interested in helping me to better myself because she didn't want me to invite uh, attentions. And I guess she didn't want me to really come into my sexuality. So, you know, I don't know. I get it. I get it. You know, you want your babies to stay babies forever. But um, she did not want me to like shave my legs or wear makeup. Um, but one day I had a, um, a chorus solo where I was going to come out and be the person singing this song in front of all of my uh, friends and family and the audience. And um, there was no way I was going to wear the required uniform with a skirt uh, and, and have hairy legs. So even though my mom would not let me shave my legs, I somehow scrounged up a razor, I think, from one of those samples that you get with the little women's magazines that you uh, sometimes get. And I, um, so I went into the bathroom and I, <laughs> with no, no water, no soap, no shaving cream, just, just took the razor and shush, up one leg, shush, up the other leg. So just, of course, all the skin <laughs> just came with it and uh, immediately started bleeding, bleeding, bleeding uh, from the fronts of my legs 
it was horrific. It was, it was, it just made me so sad. I was really upset. Uh, it hurt. Um, so I just put that down. I found a bunch of band-aids and at least covered up my, my cuts. And then I put on some stockings and just so embarrassed. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, but I went ahead and I did this solo in my middle school, you know, chorus concert. And the song I was singing was I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. <laughs> so after the the song, after the concert, I was, uh, you know, leaving, trying to rush out of there as quickly as possible. And one of my friends came up to me and was like, Sophie, yo, that was so cool that you put Band-Aids on your legs to show that you will survive. Like, that's amazing. That was so great. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I did. So I just thought that was such a crazy thing. So again, I, I feel like simple things like that, like female matters, uh, talking about uh, women's problems, you know, just would really help to, you know, parents, I think, to understand that young kids need to know about gender affirming care, no matter if you're in the gender you want to be or not. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you caught any of that, Mish, but. <laughs> oh, I heard. <laughs> I was like, maybe I got away with that one. Like, I heard it. I heard it. Yeah, you did survive. Oh my god. Oh my god. Or did I? Did I? Did I mean? <laughs> well, okay. Moving on. <laughs> no, my god. Now, for real though, any any thoughts? <laughs> I think our mothers did their best to try to protect us because they knew, yeah. you know, people be sleazy. I get it. I get it. People so. do be sleazy. Be sleazy. People do so. be sleazy. Yeah, I get it. Speaking of being sleazy, right? Okay, let's move on to number 23. Oh my gosh. Um, I was so about this little boy named Stanley when I was in middle school. <clears throat> Stanley was was hot shit. You can tell me nothing. I love Stanley. And then one day, Stanley actually talked to me. I was like, what? So we started talking on the phone all the time. I was like, oh, wow. Maybe Stanley's feeling me. I don't know. So then one day, this little boy, um, he decides that we should take our non-existent relationship to the next level. And he's like, yo, we should, I, we should have sex. And I'm like, no, no, we should not. Like, what are you talking about? We're we're like 14 at the time. I was like, I don't want to get anything. I don't want to get pregnant. He was like, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. You you won't get pregnant as long as you don't come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <yeah. laughs> right? So, <laughs> Sadly, this so is what like, think. Say that one more time. I miss you. This is what men still think. But that's the, thing, that's the thing. Either you're stupid or you're evil. <laughs> and either way, it's not good. So you're that dumb that you really think that or you're that devious that you would think that's okay to tell somebody. So, so again, it's one of the reasons I think that my courses are so necessary. I think if Stanley's dad had known about female matters and that you cannot get pregnant or you can still get pregnant, even if you uh, do not satisfy your woman, uh, or you know that it's it's still a thing. And also, I think just also the consent and communication piece in the sexual mind course that I want to build, um, it's so critical because, quite frankly, like if if he had any concern about getting my consent, he wouldn't have lied. You can't lie your way into consent. So I'd like to just maybe think then that he was just stupid. <laughs> we'll never know. The world will never know. We're actually f like friends now on Facebook, which is weird. So that's kind of funny. Stanley, are you? Maybe we should ask him. Stanley, Say are what? you watching? Stanley, are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, Stanley. <laughs> maybe I should like use people's fake names too, because I don't know. May I don't know. Hopefully he's learned a little bit in the last, what, 30 years? I don't know. We'll Yay. see. So <laughs> anyway, we'll move on to number uh, 22. 
I will issue a trigger warning for this one. It is a little, it's a little bit much, but um, basically uh, when I was uh, in middle school, this is a lot, a lot of shit happened to me in middle school, apparently, but um, they had a, a school dance. Um, my crush BJ was going to be there. Uh, I get there. I see him dancing with another girl. I walk up to this girl and I say, yo, what are you doing dancing with my man? I mean, full head tilt, everything. And my mom, who was right behind me, unbeknownst to me, snatched my ass up so quick. So uh, the very next day, I'm talking the next day, I found myself in my uh, pediatrician's, this male white pediatrician's office um, with my mom looking over his shoulder as he checked to see that my hymen was still intact. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty harrowing. <laughs> what? Yes. What? <laughs> yes. My mom was like, yo, she must be out here being fast. We're going to check and see what's up. And, um, yeah, that was one of the most traumatic things that happened to me. I was very, very, uh, very, very upset, very startled. It also like scared me because um, like I think a few weeks later, I happened to see that she was watching a, a documentary about like female, you know, genital mutilation. <laughs> I was like, is she going to do that to me? Like what the, f like, I swear to God, like she, it scared the shit out of me. So like I, um, yeah, I really want to bring <laughs> my, my courses <laughs> to the world so that people know, like, first of all, I, like, what if my hymen was not intact? It didn't mean I didn't have sex. P you know, it, some people just don't have one. Some people's rips, you know, earlier. So it, some people's, some people have sex and still have one. It's just the hymen is not the be all end all. And also, um, I'm really, really excited about this guy named Barrett Paul. He's on Instagram and he's on like this crusade to like, D uh pedestal virginity. And so I really think it's amazing because that's one of the tools that the patriarchy uses essentially is that you're you got to be chaste, you got to stay pure, you know. Women have to worry about their body count, all this bullshit. And so um I don't know, that's another thing. I kind of again, I wish my mom had had some courses on what it means to be a virgin, you know, what uh <sighs> what the hymen is for, what it is, what it does, what it means. So that was, um, yeah, that kind of sucked. <laughs> but I think it also kind of lets you know the kind of person my mom is, which is, um, I don't know, setting up some of these future ones here. Mish, you, you still seem a little shocked. I'm sorry. Did we? Oh, wow, friend. <laughs> wow. <laughs> sorry. Oh my god, the next one's probably not gonna be any better. Oh my god. So I'm hearing it with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so reason number 21 that I want to bring wholesome adult sex education into the world is because when I lost my virginity, I mean it was classic, classic, um, what do you call it? Like cliche. <laughs> I was, it was in a, on prom, junior prom. I was 16. It was in the backseat of a Cadillac, you know, like it was very, very cliche. Um, but I remember my, my boyfriend of like three years at the time, uh, putting it in and then asking, are you sure you're a virgin? Mish. <laughs> Mish. So <laughs> to say I was hurt, to say I was hurt is probably the understatement of the, the fucking century. Um, so you know, I was like, what is that? You know what? Like what? <laughs> like, why would you ask me something like that? So you know, why I'm, yeah. Yeah. So either way, that's that happened. And um, I don't know. I just feel like if he had had some courses on, uh, you know, 
about a boy and understanding that maybe it's that he's got a smaller penis and maybe how to handle that. I don't know. Or even if female matters, when we talk about female anatomy and physiology, that some women maybe do just have larger vaginas. I don't know. Like, who knows? We get, we're, we'll talk about the variations of anatomy and um, hopefully, you know, he will have learned something or the future person losing their virginity will uh, go about it in a better way. I don't know. <laughs> it also speaks to that whole, I think, virginity culture of there being something to break through or they're supposed to be so tight, you know, at first or whatever. And it's like, oh, no, that's just not really how it works. Uh, you know, so le learned a lot since then, but that was pretty, pretty shitty. <laughs> um, I feel like it was like brought around, though, by reason number 20. So. <laughs> So reason number 20 that I want to bring uh, adult sex education into the world is because, and Siri thinks I'm talking to her. I'm not. I promise. Hi. But um, basically, when I got to college, I read this book called The G-Spot. Have you ever heard of it, Me Sure. <laughs> no, I haven't. What's that about? It's about the G-Spot. And oh. it is amazing um i see my igs are cutting out they only go about an hour or so we, and we're we're making some good time we'll keep it quick so the g-spot is a real thing it's something that uh exists in the front wall essentially anterior wall of your vaginal canal and so um it's it gives you a different way of having an orgasm basically and so I read this book, I devoured it. It's basically like a bunch of doctors talking about their, disco not discovery of it, but their analysis of it, their findings on it and and having women discover it and what happens from that. And um, I don't know if you've ever heard of squirting, Mish. That's like a, that's kind of where that comes from. <laughs> the G-spot. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. <laughs> I like your little one word chime ins, but yeah. I'm here. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I just definitely feel like that's one of the things that if we knew about the G spot before we, you know, had to go searching for it, maybe, you know, especially if men knew about it, that's or, or females partners knew about it. There's so many cool ways to uh, just increase how we pleasure ourselves and how we pleasure each other. Um, so yeah. So that was a nice discovery when I got to college. Um, and it kind of segues into reason number 19. Um, basically just that from college or from the time at which I started having sex to now, I have been so many different sizes. I mean, I've been down to 140 pounds where I was basically like a, a toothpick with melons and a butt. And I've been bigger than I am right now. Um, I think my max was maybe 250, something like that. So, I, you know, I've, I've been the full gambit of weights and sizes. And every time I've actually had sex at different stages, um, I've had to like kind of learn positions and everything all over again um, or learn what works with how different partners of different builds work with my build. And so, um, again, just want to talk about some of those different variations in how you have to learn about yourself, uh, especially in course number six, intercourse discourse, where we talk about positional analysis and some, how some of those things might change as you and your body change. And that wraps up another set of reasons. Um, I definitely want to keep the pace up. So I want to keep it moving and kind of jump into some more things, but I wanted to take a quick break to update you that we've had another little bump in our pledges. Thank you all so, so much. So now we are at 3,403. Uh, so we've gained another $100. Thank you, that's amazing. Um, honestly, every little bit helps. If you give $1, $5, even if you just go on and click to uh, the little remind me button uh, to become a watcher on the campaign that really helps our analytics and helps Kickstarter to see, hey, this might be something people are actually interested in. 
So whatever you can do is so, so helpful. Thank you very much. Um, really, really, and truly appreciate you. Uh, so I definitely want to keep it moving. Let's keep it going. If you go again to bit.ly slash SWSKS, as you can see in our little banner down here, uh, and I'll try to get that into the comments one more time, you know, go there. You can actually watch this live from the Kickstarter and, uh, throw us some more bones, man. Really appreciate it. I'm hoping these stories resonate. Please leave comments and let us know if anything um, you've heard uh, is something that you've experienced as well. Uh, or, or if you have a story or some insights you'd like to share, uh, just just put pop them in. We'll read it out. So we are at reason number 18. <laughs> this is hilarious. All right, so reason number 18 I want to bring adult sex education into the world is because um, I got caught making out with my neighbor's nephew <laughs> in my neighbor's bed, <laughs> his water bed, his, their water bed, uh, next door on my mom's birthday. <laughs> so she <laughs> she's looking for me. She comes in. And I mean, we were, we weren't, we weren't going to do it. Like, don't please. I was maybe 15, four. No, 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 no. I was like maybe 13. I was kind of young. We were going to do it. But, but he had his top off. I had my top off. We were, and my mom walks in and I, you know, you hear her coming down the hall and it just, uh, it was, a, it was a bad day. <laughs> it was, a, it was a bad day, Mish. So anyway, like I, I definitely feel like that's one of those things where if my mom had been more confident in her teachings of sex to me, um, and I think she was, like, I think she did a good job because, again, I wasn't going to do anything. There's no way I was going to have sex that early. But there's nothing wrong with exploring. And I think there's something that uh, is to be said for moms who don't understand that their little girls have proclivities and they have hormones and they have pubescent thoughts and stuff, just like their little boys do. So I have two brothers who got away with everything. And I'm talking everything. And I, you know, I can't go away for a few minutes to, to just make out with a boy without, you know, <laughs> you know, without getting my ass handed me, handed to me. So, um, so yeah, I just feel like that's one of the things that could be talked about in um, my first uh, lesson on the sexual mind. And just talking about how, again, little girls are, are, we're not just like little boys, but we have the same wants and needs. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I don't know, Mish, do you feel like you were also kind of like overly sexualized or, or seen as bad for it when you were a kid? I got into some things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the world will never know. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pry. <laughs> well, you know, I, I do feel that there is a double standard, um, like with boys and girls. Um, there were things that my brother's brother could do that I couldn't do, and mm -hmm. the he had that I didn't have because I was a girl, and that made me want to get into things even more. Because why can't why can he do it and I can't? So right, right, precisely. Nice. So speaking of boys, <laughs> my my husband, um, we're going to reason number 17. Uh, we were trying to have a baby for a very long time. We uh, ended up adopting before we actually had our biological daughter. So that was uh, amazing. And sh both our kids are the love of our life. We eventually had a little girl. But in the process of figuring out our inf infertility, uh, Chris, my husband, went to a, a urologist. And he diagnosed him with what's called a varicocele. Have you ever heard of this, Misha? <laughs> Me neither. <Exactly. laughs> so no, no, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, if we had a lesson on about a boy, about some of the different things that can happen to men, especially that might affect their fertility, um, wouldn't that be amazing? So wouldn't you want to give some money to make these things happen? Go to that Kickstarter at bit.ly dot com or bit.ly slash SWSKS and give us some money to make these things happen because then you would learn that a varicocele is basically when you have like 
varicose veins of the ball sack. So you get like a little mini oven down there and it starts to basically affect your, uh, your boys. And so it was one of those things that, you know, sometimes men need surgery for it. Luckily, my husband seemed to clear up on its own, but it can be exacerbated by things like laptop use or, or not really um, keeping your nether regions at a good, comfortable space. And so, again, one of those things you just don't know. I'd love to talk about men's anatomy and physiology, too. Um, so, yeah, just to keep it going. Number 16. <laughs> Speaking of anatomy and physiology, I learned about periods when I read, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Uh, have you ever read this book or heard about this book? <laughs> I've heard of it, but I haven't read it. No, it, it's it's stupid. And it's even so old that it was talking about like how this girl was like, I just want to, I want to have a period so bad. I want to become a woman so bad. And she was talking about how she got the practice pads. And apparently when this book was written, pads were used with like a belt and you had to like click them off. I, I don't know. If you're an older woman or an older menstruating person <laughs> and you know what this woman was talking about, leave a comment or let us know how it used to be with menstru menstrual products, sanitary napkins and whatnot. Um, because, yeah, I didn't know what a period was. When I first got my period, um, I told my mom I was so excited because I'm finally a woman, you know, like like the book said. And um, uh, so she got me from school. I had it at, in gym class. Uh, so I had a little blood in my pants. I was just oh, so excited. So my mom, so excited. She came and got me, went to the store, got all these products. And then um, not tampons, though. My mom would not get me tampons. She did not want me inserting anything into my vagina, which is so crazy to me. But um, yeah, so we get home and then she's like, well, what, show me your underwear. Let me see, you know, what you saw so I can make sure you're OK and take a look. Yeah, my mom's fucking weird. And so um, I went to take my underwear off in my room and I didn't see where I had wiped myself and there was blood. There was no blood in my underwear. So I literally got some red paint. <laughs> out of my little art kit and like just put some drops on the panties so my mom wouldn't think I lied to her about starting my period. <laughs> it's the fucking stupid as shit. So like, I don't know. <laughs> so that's why I really think we need to have more education around female matters, quite frankly. <laughs> I don't know. Were you in this whole, oh, I'm finally a woman. I can't wait to get it camp or where were you at Mish? Um I was it's not that I wanted to be a woman. I just didn't want to be bossed around or told what to do. So like mm. it's, you know I wanted my independence there. Mm. I got you. I got you. So puberty was more of an a free seeking freedom. <laughs> yes. I got since I was born I just wanted to be free. That's it. <laughs> I, I think you've achieved that. Do you? Like, you've, you're one of the freest people I know. <laughs> I mean, one would think there's some things that, you know, uh, I could be freer, but it's a journey. It is a journey, isn't it? It is a journey. Well, let's keep on going. Let's keep going down this journey of you learning way too much about me. Um, <laughs> so number 15. <laughs> Um, I have not, I've, it's so rare to have a vaginal or, or, or orgasm through vaginal penetration. It's very rare for me. And the first time that I did, it was a surprise because it was with a, a gentleman who was actually very, like, he was not very well endowed, you know, I didn't expect much. And then to like, be shown the time of my fucking life. And then like, I, I mean, I'm talking, I was after... I was just on the bed. I was just breathing so hard to the point, right? That my dude looked over and was like, okay, you, you can stop now. You don't have to. And I was like, no, I'm serious. Like you have rocked my whole world here, sir. And um, I mean, so I got George Costanza basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was, it was crazy. So if you've ever seen uh, Seinfeld, that is exactly what happened to me. Um, but we'll keep it moving. 
just saying that to say that if boys knew uh, that there's all different sizes, the, the size does not matter, I promise you. Um, I'd love to, to share why that's so in my About a Boy lessons. Uh, and also intercourse discourse to talk about different positions and how they might suit different sized penises and different size implements uh, better. So yeah, that was that was uh, interesting. Uh, let's move on to number fourteen. So reason number fourteen, uh, one of my podcasts that I did was um, called Sex at Seventy, and. The gentleman, Lorenzo, was amazing, like absolutely amazing. We talked about all kinds of things from like being in like how to choose relationships, how to how to choose partners to uh, just uh, the invisibility of of getting older. Just it was amazing. Um, But one of the things that we talked about was the little blue pill. And so my lesson on. (laughs) My lesson on about a boy, the aging penis, puberty to ED. I want to bring that into the world because basically you don't lose your desire or your sexual attraction um, as you get older. You just have the, you lose the ability more so. (laughs) And so I thought that was very enlightening. And so I really want to share with the world, like how to maintain, you, you know, your desire and your erections if you are getting older. Um, so that was uh, awesome. And also check out the Sex at 70 episode when it drops in a few weeks uh, on the Sex with Sophie podcast. So just shameless plug there for you. And then the last uh, reason in this segment is number 13. And <laughs> Mish. <laughs> so this one, okay, I was in a college program at uh, in Tuskegee, Alabama. <clears throat> and I met this guy named Fred, who I, and I probably shouldn't say people's names. I'm sorry. I'll like bleep these out. But anyway, we play pool all the time. Like I'm a really good pool player, you know, or thought I was anyway, until I met my husband, but that's another story. So I um, play pool with Fred. And one day he was like, and y- y'all, Misha's, she's a mover and a shaker. Don't mind her. She's... <laughs> She told me before we even started, she was like, I'm going to be moving around. I was like, that's fine. Go ahead, do it. So <laughs> you're good. You're good. But um, yeah, so Fred and I made a bet one day at pool and his and I I was feeling Fred. So I was like, yo, if I win, I want you to kiss me. <laughs> right. You know, just being cheeky. And um, he was like, well, if I win, I want you to eat my ass. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I mean, there was some like quibbling. Yeah, for he was like, "I, you're not gonna want to do it," you know. And I was like, "No, what? Tell me, what is it? What do you want?" No, you're not gonna. You're not. I was like, "Just say it," you know. And of course, <laughs> it was like, "Well, you know, I've had a girl in the past, and she did this, and I really liked it." I was wondering if you know, if 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 I win, you know, would you do that? And I was. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I, was just, I genuinely did not know what to say. I actually, I think I, I had to come back to him about, I think I like left entirely because in my mind, I was like, oh, he's, he, he's gay. Like I genuinely was like, oh, he's gay. You know, because I was 17 at the time. This is not something. Hmm. It's not something I'd ever heard before. So I just thought any man who likes their ass pleasured in any way must be gay. And so I don't know. This, so that's kind of where that ended. <laughs> I was just like, oh, he's gay. He's not into me, you know. But and now I look back at it. And I'm like, well, that was a very brave thing to say and to do. Maybe you do like someone if you're willing to to go out on a limb with them but in that kind of way. So, you know that didn't really go anywhere, but it just opened up my mind to inter- <laughs> basically eating ass. <laughs> truth the truth. <laughs> Course number five and why it's so necessary. Because just because you like your butt mess with doesn't mean that you're 
your whole entire sexual orientation hinges on that. Um, and my friend Deb, who is uh, uh, an amazing person, uh, she's a lesbian. And somehow she sent me this article on um, how anal rectal play and pleasure is so looked down upon. And I was like, oh, you know, this is some, this is something that should be talked about. So again, I really want you to go to the Kickstarter, make a pledge so that we can bring all of these courses into life, um, including Moral Oral, where we talk about eating ass. So <laughs> that's um, that set of reasons. Hi, thank you. So definitely love one another with permission. Check out the Kickstarter and pledge some money so that we can bring all of these beautiful courses into the world. Um, Misha's computer has burned up on her. I think our last story about eating ass <laughs> maybe uh, exploded her microchips. So um, she'll hopefully be back in a little bit. Um, but I do want to keep things moving just so we can <laughs> try to get through the last few here. Um, and keep us to time. I definitely want to try to respect the fact that you have taken your day to come hang out with me and hear my crazy stories. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you'll leave a comment if you have any thoughts, if anything's resonating with you. Um, I also hope you'll go to bit.ly slash SWSKS to uh, throw a few bones our way to try to bring these courses to life. Thank you. Um, so yeah, let's keep on going. Number 12. So this is essentially um, a, a kind of a, a, what do you say it? Like a, a shameless plug, if you will, <laughs> for um, for my uh, Black Lesbian podcast that came out recently. You can actually go to iTunes or Spotify and add the Sex with Sophie podcast as uh, one that you might want to watch. It's really, really good. Um, the thing that I got from this particular episode that really was amazing was the fact that Angel was saying how she will call Fidania early in the day and text message her and, and, and tell her all these, you know, little sexyisms and, and, you know, they'll sext a little bit and talk. And then when they get home, they'll, they'll put roses down and give each other a nice bath and, you know, and then, so, and then they'll start the foreplay. And I was like, no, bitch, you were, that was, that was a whole day of foreplay. <laughs> so, I think we could all learn something about, uh, sex from our lesbian friends, if you are not one. And, uh, yeah, so that's, Part of intercourse discourse. So I want to talk about foreplay and readiness. So if you want to see this course come to life, that's backed by real information, like what Angel shared, <laughs> um, I'd love for you to uh, go to the Kickstarter page and throw a pledge our way. And so that's one of the things that uh, really, I don't know, inspired me to keep going with the with the podcast too, because it's not that we were learning about lesbians. And that's this bubble that they're in over there. There's so much we can bring into our own practice or sexual practice, if you will, um, even though we ourselves might not be women who love women. So uh, that's why I really want to build all of this out so that we can learn from each other as well as uh, from the people who are just like us. So that's reason number 12. So reason number 11 that I want to bring these courses to life is that when I first learned about masturbation, I was, you know, what, 11, 10, 11, something like that. And um, I remember I, maybe the first couple of times I did it, I, I, when I finally was able to, you know, understand, oh, wow, this is, <laughs> this is nice. Okay. Um, I would have that high of the orgasm or the climax and immediately it would just plummet immediately it would plummet and I would feel um just deep deep shame I would feel like oh the, somebody's my grandmother was watching me you know like there's a ghost <laughs> looking on and seeing what I'm doing and I'm a bad person it was terrible and so that's one of the reasons that um I want to bring these courses to life but also why I built with my dear friend Mish who's hopefully going to come back <laughs> in a bit her computer exploded on her um 
but we built a, a program called Guided Masturbations in the sexwithsophie.com space. So when you come to the site and you go to the Guided Masturbations, you will see that there are different moods you can select. Um, the first one that we've done is called Guiltless. And it's something I really wish I had when I first started understanding about masturbation. And so, again, my dear friend Mish is a narrator for this one. And each one that uh, we do creates a, a certain mood. And it starts by setting the setting, uh, walking you up, giving you some different imaginings. So, so it's really lovely. And basically, it, it helps walk you through creating the story in your own mind of what's going on. It's not erotica. It's just a way to help you visualize things that have happened in your life or that you want to see. Uh, it walks you through the climax and then it walks you back down. So it's almost like uh, a guided meditation, but the opposite. So where a um, guided meditation wants to have you at center and then it'll walk you down into a calmer place and then brings you back to center, we're, we're starting at center, walking you up, <laughs> and then we'll walk you back down with aftercare. So it's a really beautiful feature um, and something I think that really speaks to our lessons on masturbation. And so it's it's why I really want to bring these courses to life so we can go a little bit more in depth into why you might be feeling the things you feel around masturbation if you feel guilt and whatnot. We'll talk about that in the sexual mind as well. So moving on to number 10. All right. So, uh, unfortunately <laughs> I, um, I had a condition called folliculitis and, uh, if you've never heard of it, it's basically where it happens to black people a lot, especially who tend to get, um, like razor bumps. It's basically like razor bumps in your pubis area. Um, they're not pretty. They don't feel great. Uh, and they don't look great. And so one day, um, I was with my boyfriend and I noticed he wasn't in the living room. So I went to go find him. He was in his room and he was looking through his mother's nursing book on STDs. <laughs> so he, so I was like, Oh God, I was so embarrassed. So, so embarrassed because he genuinely thought that I had an STD when I had folliculitis. Um, luckily, 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 um, I had an amazing gynecologist, uh, who saw the problem was like, Oh, I know what this is. You're fine. We're good. Put me on clindamycin. And it was it, like within weeks, it was all gone. And I honestly have not had an issue with it since. Um, and so it's one of those things where, again, I think if we had some information about some of the different problems that women face, and I don't, I doubt this is something that only women face, but it seems to happen more prevalently with us because we shave or, or tend to um, uh, get wax and different things that can cause folliculitis. So again, if we had female matters, that could be something that could help us understand what's, what's going on down there. Um, so that also wasn't very fun. <laughs> let's, um, oh, we got Mish back. What up, Mish? What up, y'all? <laughs> Sorry. No, that's issues. okay. Tech issues. No, I was telling the the world, all few people here, <laughs> that, we, that uh, your computer must have exploded after the the eaten ass story. <laughs> yeah, it had enough. It was like too much, friend. Too much. Too much. Oh my gosh. But no, and I I thought that was, I don't know. I thought that was so crazy. Uh, thing to experience but looking back at it I don't know again I, I think he was a, a braver person than I ever could be um but yeah okay let's move on to <laughs> reason number nine this one uh, uh let me also issue a trigger warning we're going to be talking about grape for the the next couple ones um so just if the, if that's something that you cannot handle or tolerate go ahead and put put it on pause right now or come back in a few minutes. Um, but I wanted to, to talk about this because I think it's so important, especially when it comes to lessons around consent and communication. Um, and that includes about a boy. 
um, because I had a friend who I talked to just about every day. He's my best friend. He lives in China. And, um, and I probably shouldn't like set up, I'm telling all his business, but, um, anyway, I was like, Hey, listen, I, I'm, I'm talking to this girl that, you know, you and I, that I met through you. I know we're all, you were all friends. And so I'm, she, she got in touch with me. We've been hanging out. I thought she might like to know. And he was like, I don't like that bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, yeah, she raped me. And I was like, what? Like, are you, are you serious? And so like, I mean, immediately, immediately cut her off, blocked her, everything. But I just felt so horrible, you know, that, that my male friend had this experience and, um, I don't know, like he seems so reluctant to, to tell me about it or, or to go into it. Um, but I could tell how like it really hurt him just how quickly he was, was angered by the fact that she was trying to like wheedle her way into my life. Um, and so, I don't know, I just thought it was one of those sad things where when, when men experience grape, they're not usually taken very seriously or, or it's like, oh, but you know, you, you got up to do it. So, you know, you must've really wanted it. That kind of thing. So I don't know. I just felt like that's something that really needs to be d discussed. Um, I don't know. Have you ever encountered a gentleman who's experienced uh, molestation or, or, or harassment? So a lot of men that I've heard um, that this has happened to them, they say it and they don't understand that they were molested or they were raped. They're saying it, uh, you know, it's like older women did these things. And they're like, yeah, I was the man. I was like, you were a boy. Oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> that was a grown woman. So so not only like taking advantage when somebody's, because he was inebriated at the time. Oh. But um, but you're absolutely right. Statutory grape does not stop at you being a little girl, you know. No, wow. That's doesn't. a very good point. It doesn't. Like... Um, like <laughs> a man recently posted on his Facebook that when he was uh, 16 years old, he was dating a 38 year old. Oh no! <laughs> like what? <laughs> huh? It's like yeah. you were being groomed by a 38. -year -old. <laughs> I was driving her car, and I was, I was just like, oh, no, that's sir. horrible. No, sir. <laughs> no. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened to him. Cause I, I mean, you know, cause it's, you know, it's damaging. It's damaging, you know, to to your your brain's not even done being grown yet. You, we don't stop getting like myelina myelination myelination, <laughs> like the little fatty deposits around our neurons until we're like 21, 22 years old. So you know, you're literally, you know still messing with a child even if they're just out of being a you know a teenager essentially so yeah I, i'm sorry that's but i think it's something that needs to be talked about um i'm gonna move right into number eight like unfortunately i i too have been graped um it sounds so fun when you say it that way <laughs> it's not funny but it's funny like it's terrible. Like I, I, I watch Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I don't know if you ever seen that show. You know, but there was an episode where where Spaghetti the dog kept humping him, and he was like, "I used to think grape was funny." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, who says that? But no, so I don't know. It's weird what we have to do for the algos these days. But yeah, so um, yeah, I was graped, and I didn't accept it for a while because of two things firstly um i was drugged but i did you know i thought when you're drugged you're knocked out so i wasn't knocked out so i maybe i wasn't drugged so maybe maybe i did you know i just didn't i couldn't accept that that was a possibility because i was present you know I wasn't capable of moving my limbs um and I have since like I was very I wasn't a teetotaler or anything but I never did 
I never smoked anything, never really did anything until I was like 38 years old is the first time I smoked weed. <laughs> but um, so, and that, that just opened a whole door for me. So I never actually took drugs. And then when I started taking drugs, I was like, oh yeah, I was definitely fucking drugged. Like, so it was one of those things where I did, you know, I didn't call it what it was because I didn't, I just didn't have the vocabulary to understand that that was still being drugged or roofied or whatever. Um, and then secondarily, I had had sex with that person before voluntarily. And so I thought, oh, well, you know, it's not like I didn't do it of my own volition the first time. Um, so I don't know, it was just a whole weird space. And so I just think that if, we, again, we had more education as to not only like consent from the gentleman's part, understand what they shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing, but also for girls to and and people who can be anybody. <laughs> Clearly, we just talked about how that happens to gentlemen too. Um, but if anybody had the knowledge about, you know, being protective of their drinks and and understanding what those different things feel like, and uh, if you're starting to experience those things, I don't know. I just think that could help a lot of people. So. You know, it's it's a it's a touchy subject. It really is. I feel like I've processed it. It's this was such a long time ago. You know, it doesn't really bother me. You know, but like I I understand how it, it it's a it's a touchy thing for folks. Um, so I mean, we can move right on. <laughs> I don't know if you have any interjections at this point. Um, sorry, it happened to you, friend, and I'm happy you can process and move through and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish people uh, would leave people alone and know about consent. Consent is so important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, speaking of, I guess, that sort of consent and communication piece, let's wrap this section up with number seven, which is that um, I had a podcast <laughs> uh, episode about like kink and BDSM and Shibari. Uh, which Misha, I think you know a little something about. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's such a beautiful thing. Um, so we started this podcast episode talking about like whips and ball gags. <laughs> and by the end of it, we were like, oh, what a beautiful thing this is. It's all about communication and consent and finding the focal point of pleasure with your partner and trust. And, and I was like, wow, you know, if we can, if we could have a conversation that, you know, I think fr from a very lay person such as myself, who, who has this 50 shades of gray understanding of not that I ever read that shit, Jesus fucking Christ. But um, I, okay. I, I read a person's blog about them reading 50 shades of gray so every chapter was basically a blog post about her thoughts on it so that's how i know that there's a wide swath of people out here who's that's all they know when it comes to kink and when it comes to bdsm is is pulling tampons out of vaginas with your mouth like geez. so yeah that's horrific i definitely feel like if we had Yes, that happens in that book, Mish. So, but if we have, if we had a course that talked about the full diaspora of intercourse, whoa, and even touched on some kink and stuff like that, I think that, especially if we could couch it in the way that it was presented to me, that it's about trust and about talking and about understanding and about really finding that that focal point of pleasure with the person you're with i just think that's beautiful so any thoughts on the kink space <laughs> myself um i think it's important for people to educate themselves and also go and just experience it go visit munchies go to dungeons and explore instead of trying to rope other people who aren't into that stuff into it there's a whole community of people that are into it. Go explore in those spaces and not right. in spaces where it's not your jam. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, 
that's just the realness. Uh, and that also concludes this segment of reasons. So, <laughs> so we are still at the 3,403, which is awesome. I feel like we've actually made some headway tonight. So thank you very much. And, I, and it's also like, it's tonight for me. It's almost nine o'clock here. Um, but I know it's like the middle of the day for a lot of the people tuning in. So <laughs> thank you so much for taking a piece of your Saturday to come hang out with us. Um, we have one more set of reasons that we will fly through so we can get you guys out of here before it gets too late for me. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. So let's hop right into reason number six. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these really are speaking to the consent piece. So this is a bit of a trigger. Um, but I was with a guy who, I mean, ugh, so fine, so fine. Like he was the chocolatiestly, chocolatiest, gorgeous skin, chocolatiest man I've ever met. Six, seven, built to the gods, dreads, just ugh, like, mm. but when we were having sex one day, um, like he just decides he's going to take off the condom midway through. And um, so I didn't realize it um, until, you know, things were over. And uh, I mean, I was horrified, horrified. Um, and, and I didn't learn until later that that is actually grape. Um, and so I, you know, I got tested immediately. Nothing came of it. Thank goodness. But that ended that relationship really quickly. Um, and, and that was pretty horrific because like, I don't know, like that's just what a huge violation of trust. So I, I definitely feel like the consent piece with the sexual mind would have been a helpful tool for that gentleman to have. Um, and also even the about a boy thing, like what if I had something and gave him something? So, he, you know, he should learn a little bit about health and safety. Um, but definitely the consent thing, because that that again is that was just a pretty terrible experience. Um, but let's keep on going because I think I have some happier ones here. Um, or beforehand, I guess uh Misha, I think you're still taking a little bit of a break. So that's okay. Let's go on to number five. So reason number five that I want to bring these adult sex education courses to life. So again, go to that Kickstarter at bit.ly slash SWSKS. And um, again, you can watch this from here if you wanna just go there and hang out. Uh, but the reason number five is that um, everybody was all about the rabbit. I don't know if you've heard of the rabbit. Everybody's about the rose now, the rose. Um, and so I thought this would be the the shit. You know, I was all about sex, sex in the city, uh, sex and the city. <laughs> um, and, you know, Charlotte thought it was the best thing in the world. So it must be great. Right. So I ordered one from like eBay. This is how old I am. Um, and it came and it was awful. I did not care for it. Didn't feel good. Didn't like that at all. And so I, you know, I didn't use a sex toy for a long ass time after that. Cause I was like, if this is the best of the best and it's, it ain't shit. Yeah. And then I came across um, a company called Lilo and uh, I won like a contest that they were holding about, I don't know. And so, yeah, I got a free Lilo and it was just one of those like clit stimulators and it, oh, it changed my mind really, really fucking quick. So I um, would love, love, love to help correct people's misconceptions with uh, sex toys if they've had a bad experience. Um, so I have a course called Intro to Solo Sex Toys in the Masturbatorium course uh, that I'd love to bring to life if you would consider giving something to the Kickstarter so that we can uh, get the contractors that we need and, um, or we have them, we just have to pay them so that they can help us build these courses out. Um, so let's move on to reason number five. Oh, that was five. So we're down to four y'all. We are flying through these things. We might just make it before nine. Um, or 
whatever it is in America. Um, four, my first time faking it <laughs> was actually with uh, this sweet, sweet kid. Uh, I was in college at Florida A&M University in Tallahassee, Florida, and I had a friend named Dallas, and Dallas was appalled that I had never had an orgasm um, with someone. And so he made it his mission to um, take me into this old building at night, at one of these old science buildings on campus, and he would just eat me out for hours, like like all night, just eat. Me. So so after like five days of him eating me out to not, to no avail, I think he just felt like I got to do it. Like I got, I know I can. And, and um and and so after like a lot of time trying, I I just went ahead. I had I never really wanted to be a faker, but I figured now's the time. So I went ahead and I faked it, and and I you know and that was that. But um yeah, I just wish we had more courses on <laughs> how to do these things. Um so hopefully poor poor guys like Dallas can learn a little something. And I, and you know, also I was very young at the time. So if I'd had a better understanding of communication, I probably could have conveyed a lot better how to help him help me. So um, yeah. And we didn't do anything else. And we stayed friends for a little bit after that. And that's all that our relationship consisted of was him having fun with me. And that was really sweet. So I like that some guys can just they get off, I guess, by getting you off. And I think that's really sweet. Um, so yeah, reason number three. Um, I was with a guy who could not just be with me. Whenever we had sex, he had to have porn on or corn on, excuse me. And um, I mean, it got to a point where it was fuck, it was just fucking weird, man. Like there was no having a quickie because we had to always get the video going and get to the spot and then i'm like so why am i even here <laughs> at this point you know so it just got really really uh upsetting to me and um i wish i'd known about porn addiction corn addiction um back then because i definitely feel like that's what he suffered from like to even be physically intimate with a person in reality and still need to have that in order to climax. I just thought that was so crazy. But now learning more about, you know, prawn addiction, I understand it. It's definitely a mental, it's an addiction just like any other addiction. Um, and it has like, you know, actual ramifications on your brain. Um, I'm a cognitive neuroscientist. And so like, I absolutely have seen, you know, how um, your, your, your different uh, synapses connect and, and, and how they can, you know, suffer from the wrong types of neuroplasticity. And so, um, yeah, I definitely feel like that's uh, a, something that should be addressed. So I'd love for you to, um, you know, get these courses off the ground, <laughs> help me to do it so that we could talk about mental preparation um, and, and just the mental state and the sexual mindset that you have to have to not only please someone else, but to get yourself in a place where you can uh, receive pleasure and give pleasure. So even though like, I, I really do, I like porn, but once you learn like the exploitation involved, the trafficking involved, um, the fact that I'm sure there's, there's so many good porns out there, I guess, you know, that don't do these things that are exploitative. It's kind of like, you know, do you really want to, roll those dice though. So it's, you know, it's something that you have to really ask yourself if you want to continue to support. And I think having uh, information about real sex and that's that, that actually happens in real people's bedrooms can maybe help people transition away from the fantasy world. Um, so yeah, moving into uh, reason number two. <laughs> this is, this is okay. This is another trigger warning one folks. Uh, and let me check in on Mish though. Mish, how you doing? Computer's <laughs> doing the thing, so time to charge it. So I'm charging. It's just sounding like it's about to blow up, but I'm here though. <laughs> no, you know what? 
It's not. I'm going to talk about abortion. <laughs> okay. Well, quite the segue. Have at it, friend. <laughs> We're going to keep it light and breezy as we do <laughs> But like, and I, and I know you only have a couple more minutes for me, so hopefully we can get through the, the rest, the, this one and the last one soon. But um, again, it took me a very long time to conceive. And um, unfortunately, my first IVF attempt, come in here, come in. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you know what? Hey, let's go. <laughs> you know what? This is, this is it. This is my reason right here. <laughs> we'll talk about abortion later. How about that? <laughs> so, <laughs> come here, baby. <laughs> oh my gosh. My sweet husband just deposited my children on me. <laughs> and so that could sound so bad in a different context. I'm sorry. But, um, Mish, honey, it's it's nine o'clock. We are at time. You said you said oh, what four was your cutoff? So let's let's go ahead and cut it off. Um uh, I love you. Yes, yes. So let's 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 suffice it all to say this is the reason why I'm doing any of this. I I do not want my girls to grow up in the same world that I did. Um I don't want them to experience some of the harrowing <laughs> sexual related incidents that I, I experienced if I can help it. And this is my way of helping it. Yes, ma'am. I have something in my hair. You're going to help me. But everybody, this is uh, reason number one. Reason number two. This is the one that uh, took so long to get here. Um. But yeah, so you, <laughs> these are Auntie Misha's kids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's, let's go ahead and wrap it up for our, our one viewer now. And uh, let me let you get on your way. All right. But um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and checking us out. <laughs> All right. Let me put you down so I can get her.